Hi, welcome back to Human Resource Management and we will be discussing wages and salary administration. So you should be asking, what is the role of human resources in payment of wage and salary? Right, so actually one of the most important functions of human resources is the payment of the proper salaries and wages to all company employees because the, the pay that the employee receive from the employer is the very reason for, for them to work. If there is no, no pay, then there's no sense in going to, to work for the company. Uh, the pay provides them with with a strong incentive. Right? It's it's like an incentive. If I work hard, if I do my job well, then I will be in, incentivized through the wage or the salary. And also the the salary that they re, they receive or the rate of the salary that they receive is uh, it indicates their status in the company so if you have a higher salary that means that you are in a higher position if you have a lower salary so you are in a lower position same in the community uh, if you have a higher salary you have a, a higher status in the community and and that is how it works so basically the human resource management uh, set the, the wage scale so that they will be able to attract better employees, if not the best, the better employees for the profitability of the company. Okay, and there are several theories for uh, wages and uh, let's go through them. Um, number one is uh, classical wage theory. Classical wage theory is... Um, based upon the basic concept that labor is a commodity it's like a product or a service and we have to pay for it depending on the supply and the, the demand of the the product which is the labor so the greater the supply of the labor the lower the price is right if there uh, there is uh, so many of that particular job then there they are paid less okay and but the greater the demand of the particular uh, labor uh, if your uh, job is uh, if there are just a few of you few of you doing this particular job so there will be a higher demand for that um, job therefore there will be a higher pay Okay, so if there are a large number of supply, there is a lower pay. If there's a higher demand for that labor, there will also be a higher pay. Okay, but it is said in this uh, wage theory that the wages or salary should not fall below the subsistence level, meaning it should not be below what they need. Right? Let's say, for example, um, uh, they need 500 pesos per day. So their, their daily wage should not be below that so that they will be able to live uh, decently, right? And um, this is the classical wage theory. The second theory is the just wage theory. Okay, the just wage theory is, it states that a, a just wage is a wage which permits the recipient worker to live in a manner in keeping with his position in the society. Because again, um, <clears throat> the rate of your salary will also reflect or will, be, uh, will have a relationship with what is your status in the community or in the company. And um, this theory is the basis in the implementation of minimum minimum wage laws All right. um, while uh, it, it could not be consistent with the minimum requirements for a decent living in the social organization but it responds to the basic requirements for subs subsistence living so um, although it is not it's not very stable it's not consistent but it should still answer to the or I mean it should still provide for uh, for uh, provide a, a decent living 
status for the employee and um, the uh, the creation of the tripartite the tripartite is the the uh, composed of labor which is usually labor unions management and department of labor is the answer to the study of the implementation of just wages right because it, if we say just it should be uh, a just wage should provide the the worker to live in a manner that is decent. When we say decent, so they have enough for food, they are able to provide for clothing, for shelter, and other emergency expenses. So that is the just wage. The next theory is the, the wage fund theory. The wage fund theory, it, it was expounded by John Stuart Mill and uh, based on the Malthusian theory of population and the law of diminishing returns. Um, this theory holds the idea that the working capital of the nation provides a fund from which wages can be paid. The fund uh, is to be, it is going to be divided by all the workers proportionately. It's in proportion. So when a certain group gets a bigger share of the total fund the rest of the group the rest in the group will have less to share right so more, it's like there is a fixed amount of 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 wage and if one group is given a higher salary then there will be less that will be given to the other groups so an increase in the wages of some of some groups through collective bargaining or any pressures will adversely affect the wages of others. So um, there is a bargaining that is happening already. And if they are paid more, then it is going to affect the other. So under this theory, it would appear that it is a futile. It is... It is futile to attempt to increase wages. No, it is. It would appear that when you um, increase the salary of other workers in the company, it is going to um, affect or it will result in the decrease of wages of other sectors or other groups. So um, it should be. So it. it I think it's. It says that it's going to be impossible to increase because if you are going to increase the salary of this group, you are going to decrease the salary of the other group because you have a fixed you have a fixed amount, the wage fund or the fund that is allocated for the labor. So that is uh, the fund wage, the wage fund theory. Another uh, theory is the bargaining theory of John Davidson. The bargaining theory um, proposes that uh, labor is a commodity like anything that could be bought at a price by the user. Okay, As a commodity, uh, the labor as a commodity, uh, it has a price that is determined by the bargaining process uh, between the buyer and the seller. The sellers are the labor or the workers. And the buyers are the users or the industries that utilize their services. So there is going to be a bargaining between, uh, there is a negotiation process between the buyer and the seller. The labor sets the limit of the value of their services as conditioned by the utility of reward. So they are the ones who set the value. Um, this bargaining theory brings about the organization of labor unions. So it started the labor unions because of the negotiation. So, um, of course, the companies will not be able to negotiate with all the people. So that is why they created labor unions so that they, they will be able to have representatives or officers that will be bargaining with the uh, buyers which are the the employers or the industries that need the services right so um, which actually is sometimes if the bargaining uh, 
or if the negotiation is not good or or um the labor insists on higher wages but the administration or the industries decline then that is when there is a strike or lockout or rally that is going to be done by the laborers so that, that is that idea came from the bargaining theory of john davidson the next is the marginal productivity theory marginal productivity theory uh, it says that the it is it is said that it is the best explanation of the the wages in the modern industry <clears throat> It says that the the workers' mobility affects the structure of wages in this industry. When we say uh, mobility is <clears throat> when the workers transfer from one company to another, and um, that is going to affect the wages of the industry because uh, if let's say for example if they transfer. For them to be able to transfer, the other company should offer them higher uh, rate, right? Because why are you going to transfer if you will be getting the same rate from your other company? So that is why it affects. Um, especially in the call center, when I was in the BPO industry before, um, most of my friends uh, stayed in the company for like a year. And after that, they transfer because they said uh, they are just um, you know, building their portfolio. So when they transfer to the other company, they are offered a higher salary because they already have the experience. Um, and um, that is what they do. They just stay for one year. They transfer to another to get a higher salary. So uh, that is mobility. It affects the wages in the industry because... If I am the new company and I want to hire that person from the other company, I have to offer a better uh, wage or salary so that I will be able to get that employee, right? So that is why it affects. Um, however, it is said that it is only it is not only the the difference in the wage or salary that make the employee transfer to another company there are other there are other reasons uh, one of them are uh, it's the better opportunities so uh, if you don't see your yourself uh, promoted or uh, improving in that company then you are going to go to somewhere that is going to give you a better salary and also will give you improvement opportunities Another reason will be advancement for uh, more benefits or better working environment or the corporate at atmosphere. So there are other reasons. But the essential idea of the marginal productivity theory is that the transferring of employees actually affects the salary or the wages in the industry. right? Because um, when you are hiring additional labor force you are you are you are gonna offer better right next is the purchasing power theory uh, the purchasing power theory tries to establish the relationship between wages and the level of economic activity uh, it says that the more income the workers get the higher the purchasing power for the workers then this in the this higher uh, power or the bigger purchasing power of the workers will actually result in the increase of, of uh, consumption of goods and services because they have more money they can buy more they can get services more and this increase in consumption will lead to uh, employment opportunities okay so um, that is why um, if that is why the uh, sometimes if you will notice uh, if there are holiday before uh, w during the time of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, if the holiday is set on Thursday, they usually move it to Friday so that there will be a long weekend. The reason behind that is because so that people will will uh, go on shopping, will go to the malls, will eat out, 
will go to recreational parks and 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 if they do that they spend no so that the money will will evolve um and that is related to the purchasing power theory if there are if the people have money or the workers have money they have a bigger purchasing power if they have bigger purchasing power consumption will increase if consumption will increase it will result to employment opportunities another one is the labor theory of value this one this was presented by Karl Marx and it emphasizes that labor is the source of all products and uh, without it um, without this important component there will be no goods for human consumption so uh, and therefore labor should get the greater share of the profit so it depends on uh, those who are working more should be paid more right that's the labor of labor theory of value next is the standard of living theory wages um, this theory uh, this is actually um, this states that wages should be based on the cost of living and what is the cost of living cost of living is the cost or the amount that you need in order for you to live decently decent nga pagkabuhi when we say um, when we say decent meaning you have enough no you will you are able to eat three times a day you have snacks you're able to buy clothes you are able to pay your rent or mortgages and um, you can pay for you can buy medicine and all the things that you need you can send your kids to school so that's that's what the standard uh, the cost of living is and it says that uh, the cost of living is um, dependent upon the economic needs of the family right for the basic necessities uh, like food clothing and shelter our uh, our productivity index has to uh, it has to to cope with uh, the increased competition in the global market that is why sometimes this the the need to give a wage that is going to to um, provide them with the cost of living or should be based on the cost of living sometimes it does not materialize and that is because um, the companies have to make sure that their productivity will be able to uh, cope up with the competition in the global market because uh, of the globalization we have to compete with the, the global market and uh, our product should be um, at par with uh, the quality and the price of the global market so there are it is uh, dif difficult hard for them to to be able to provide this with given that they have to uh, they have to spend more in improving and making their product competitive in the global market so this is actually um, um, what you call that this is actually very good if this will be fully used all right because according to uh, i think the the cost of living is is like 800 pesos plus a day but the minimum wage is below the cost of living so um that should that is something that needs to be worked on for uh between the the company and uh, industries and the labor force so those are the the eight theories of wages now we are going to determine how are we going to determine the actual salary to be paid what are how are we going to do that in order for us to do that is we have to do wage and salary surveys so so well, what is a wage and salary survey so the term itself you have to do a survey you have to make a survey to determine what is the the wage acceptable wage or a range of wage for that particular job or all of the job that is uh, that you need right so how are you going to do that 
there are steps in order for you to do the salary survey. One is you have to define the labor market. So you have to define uh, which industry, uh, which region or area that you are going to do the survey or the firm that you will be conducting your survey. So that's defining the labor market. Next is you have to list list of, of key jobs and positions that is common to most firms in the survey. And uh, this will ensure a representative sampling of the jobs that will be selected as universal for a particular wage or salary survey. So it should be, uh, the survey should be done for the common, you know, it should be, so that you will be able to set uh, a, a sampling, a very good sampling that is going to be representative of the jobs that you are you want to survey. Next is the detailed description of jobs. So you have to, um, uh, what do you call that? You have to be clear on the job description so that you will be able to come up with the uh, appropriate or good data. Next is collection of salary data. So you have to collect them. This may be done through a set of questionnaires. Uh, and can be a set of questionnaires or a combination of questionnaires and interviews. So you will be able to get the accurate information. Uh, so which uh, the information should be able to pinpoint the problem area that has to be addressed by, addressed by the compensation level, uh, the compensation structure, and the terms of payment plan. So you, you have to determine that. Um, problem area next is the compilation of salary data so you have you have to compile them so you will be able to analyze and then you are going to submit the result of the the survey so after this is done then the company will be able to make several decisions based on the the survey that you made and uh, after that so you will be able to make a salary structure ready so you can salary structure what how much is paid for um, a regular employee uh, for the supervisor and above okay so you, you have to have a you have to design the structure for the wage and then uh, why do we have to do a salary survey so as mentioned we have to find out what is the prevailing salary what is the running salary in the community for that comparable jobs right so that, that is the main purpose of doing that and um, there are methods uh, since you have already made a structure a design for salary uh, then we have to know how, uh, what are the methods of wage payment uh, there are actually um, two methods one is by the time work and the second is by the amount of work produced which is very simple so by the time work meaning this is uh, wages are computed in terms of the unit of time so uh, formula is the hours times the rate which is equals to work right so how many hours you have work then your rate per day that is your salary and this is best applied when, number one, employees have little or no control over how much work they produce. Uh, number two, there is no clear-cut relationship between the effort made to produce the work and the amount of work produced. Uh, work delays occur often and are beyond the employee's control. Quality of work is very important and also units of work produced cannot be distinguished and cannot be measured. So if you are not able to distinguish the, the unit, how many hours it should take to do this, uh, you have no control over that. So it's best that you are going to use the by the time. So how many hours is spent, so you are going to pay. The next method is by the amount of work produced. In this one, earning depends on how much work the employee completes. So it is called also an incentive wage plan and computed as N 
times u equals w. N stands for the number of units produced. Um, u is the rate per unit in pesos. And w is the wages earned per day or per week. It can be paid per day, per week, per um, every two weeks or every month. But it is per unit. There are um, situations where you can best use it. Number one, when the unit of completed work can be measured easily. So if you are able to me measure it easily on, on the unit of work, then you can use this method. Uh, number two, when there is a clear relationship between a worker's effort and the results of his effort. Uh, number three, when the quality of work is less important than quantity or when quality standards are uniform and measurable. Lastly, when the work when the flow of work is regular, breakdowns are few and jobs follow a standard procedure with few interruptions, then you use the by the amount of work produced. Right? So those are the, the methods of payment. And there are policies that uh, human resource management should follow um, in wage and salary. Number one, the wage and salary plan must be easily understood. So every worker uh, wants to know how, how his company wage plan works or how he is paid. So to keep the employees in the uh, in the loop, to keep them aware, so it should be properly discussed because if the employees does not know how they are earning how the earnings are determined it could lead to um, distrust or on the management and uh, there will be fear that they are not getting paid for what they have earned what they have worked so it should be clear <clears throat> number two salaries in the wage plan should be easily computed because most employees are they, they like to compute even me i i like to compute um, what they uh, are earning and uh, to make sure that the salaries are correct yeah we do that uh, so we will understand so therefore a wage payment plan should be simple enough to allow the quick calculations um, the methods of wage payment must be explained during the orientation program and employees must be made to understand that wages are related to employees' effort and productivity and based on a wage plan that relates to duties and responsibilities. So it should be made clear on the orientation period. <clears throat> Number three, salary should be made relevant with efforts. So standards should be put in place or should be set and it can be it should be reachable by the good worker. So your standard should be, of course, achievable, right? Uh, standards should be set so as to challenge a worker uh, to make them reach for extra effort. So they have to decide to do extra effort so they can uh, come up with a standard so that they will be able to be paid properly. Once he has achieved the standard, so he should be rewarded for his effort with increased earnings right so there so there are uh, companies actually that uh, evaluate the performance and based on the performance they give incentives to the employee number four incentive wage plans the the ones that are paid by the uh, the work done should provide payment for incentive earnings to employees soon after they have been earned by efforts exerted to reach standards. So it should be paid soon so that the, the employee will be able to feel that they have the incentive. In this way, uh, the reward or if they are penalized, if there is a penalty, it should be fixed in their minds. So in relationship to their work. So they will be able to know that if they do if they do good, then they will be paid, uh, uh, what do you call that? They will be paid uh, with the incentive. If they do not, then they will be penalized. There will be penalties, right? Lastly, the 
the method of payment should be stable and unvarying. So it should be stable or uh, at least fixed. Should be more uh, depende, you know, whether whether. So it should be fixed because um, any frequent, if you are going to change your wage payment frequently, um, this may lead workers to think that uh, the management is trying to confuse or even cheat them right they are not the, the management does not want to pay them correctly so it is important to choose a plan that will fit the needs of the organization so that the necessity of, of changing will be eliminated right so <clears throat> because it will become confusing and the employees will uh what do you call that they will of course complain and it will not be good for the company All right so those are the policies that we have to um, take note when um, paying for the salaries and wages then moral ren renewal in the workplace so um, there are several things that you have to remember as an employee, uh, as a, an employer also, or as a leader. So number one, you have to know that leaders have limitations. So they are not super man. They have limitations. Tao lamang, right? So it was actually said that people who achieve great heights but lack the bedrock character to sustain them through the stress are headed for disaster so if they are able to reach achievements but they don't have the character they will be it will be a disaster so you have to know that the leaders have limitations they cannot do everything right they may they may excel in many aspects but they still have limitations number two you choose the character so according to uh, john maxwell we have no control over a lot of things in life. We don't get to choose our parents. We don't select the location or circumstances of our birth and upbringing. We don't get to pick our talents and IQ. Yeah, that's right. But we do choose our character. In fact, we create it every time we make choices. So in the work place um, you can create your own character uh, do you want to uh, do you uh, it's actually up to you so most of the most of the uh, employers look at the character of the employee right it depends how you handle things so you have to do that and third walk the talk <clears throat> so you have to do uh, I mean, uh, the integrity, it's the integrity in the workplace. So, um, there are many employers that prefer to have employees with integrity first. No, kasaligan ba sila? Then, the skills is the second. So, it should, it's attitude always. Skills can be taught, Mangod. Uh, it can be taught, it can be learned. But the integrity, it is innate, it is in you ready if you don't have integrity regardless of your skill <clears throat> dili siya maayo next is avoid compromising so um you have to uh i mean if if you have seen something that is not correct then you don't have to compromise like oh, sige, di na lang ka na ako isumbong, kaya naman. you have to be uh, connected to integrity so you have to avoid um, compromising because if you keep on compromising then it it will become a habit that uh, everyone already forgets what's right and what's wrong okay next is use the same measures on yourself so if you want a leader who is not immoral, not corrupt, or incompetent, so you have to also use that to yourself. You should not be immoral also. You should not be corrupt. You should not be incompetent also. So you use that same measure. 
Number six is face the mirror. If you want one, uh, if you want one less badlungon skalawag in the workplace, then reform yourself, right? Because if you are uh, an skalawag in the workplace, place, then you're adding to the other skalawag in the workplace, and you also have to take feedback. Uh, positively as um, as a gift for you to improve, right? Because you will not be able to improve if you will not take feedback uh, positively. If naalay masulti ang isa ka tao, then you will already stop, you will get angry, you will get frustrated. Uh, you will become worse no? if you will not improve. So you have to take feedbacks uh, positively. Number Number seven is show the mirror to your leaders. So if you want honest and concerned leaders, you just have to show them the mirror too. Meaning you also have to show them how it is done and uh, so that they will be able to uh, reflect. Because some of them might have uh, like blind spots that they do not see what they are, what, what their mistakes are what their shortcomings and what are their transgressions. So you have to show them also. Uh, if you have any comments, you have to provide the comment. Don't keep quiet just because you don't want to have conflict. Because uh, if the leader is uh, accepting or if the leader is uh, not corrupt and open to feedback, then you were actually able to help. Because we do not know our mistakes, right? Because for us, we are doing good. Uh, what we are doing is right. But for others, it might not be the same case. So you have to, you have to provide feedback so that um, it will be corrected. Then number eight, uh, don't just admit mistakes. Correct them. Yeah. If you know that it, you have done wrong, you have made a mistake then <clears throat> accepting that you made a mistake but not doing anything about it is still wrong so if you see that you have you have you realize that you made a mistake then you have to correct it do not repeat the same mistake number nine have an improvement plan so you have to um, grab all the opportunity to improve yourself Right, you have to any feedback feedback given to you. You should take it and reflect on it. If it's not if if it's um what do you call that um if it will make you better, then go make the, an improvement plan. If you cannot change it right away, then you have to do baby steps so that you will have. Um, you have a plan to improve yourself. Number 10 is rebuild and don't slide back. So you have to set your mind toward the future. Okay? You, you have to stop going back to your past. You have to uh, stop um, dwelling on the past. You can remember. You, you take note of the past because you can use that for your future. But always move forward. Okay? So those are the renewal in the workplace, moral renewal in the workplace. Now we have the old classification or the classifications of workers. So um, in the past, uh, we have, we call them blue collar, white collar, pink collar. So the blue collar are those that are doing manual labors. So the white collars are doing office works. And uh, the pink colors are those associated with women, like nurse, secretarial, teachers. So those are the pink collar jobs. But um, today, we have new classification of workers, and we call them labor grades. So we have the skilled labor, we have the unskilled labor, and we also have the professionals. So if we say skilled labor, these are the workers who have uh, received specialized training to do their job. So they have trained they are very skilled in what they do there are also unskilled labor these work 
workers who have received no special training and have few specific skills. So they don't have so much skills. They don't have specific trainings as well. The third is the professionals. Uh, the professionals is what is considered the elite of the labor grades. These are those who need advanced degree to do their jobs. Example, doctors, lawyers, teachers, uh, scientists, no, uh, astronauts, those are professionals. And uh, they, uh, I mean, they need advanced degree to, to perform their jobs. So these are the new um, classification. Mm. All right, so that ends our discussion for this chapter. And um, I have already posted Okay, so this ends the, our discussion in this chapter. If you have any questions, you can just post it in the classroom.